putting you in categories. As a child, you do not have the intellectual capacity to withstand that, and you adopt that as an identity. You give in to that. And then one other factor that I don't know if I had in my life or not, but which is often a factor in the homosexual neurosis, is being molested. And if you're molested, say, as an eight-year-old, your world becomes sexualized, boom, overnight. What uh, would have taken a, a few more years to occur, occurs instantly. And so your emotional needs suddenly and instantly becomes confused with sexuality. So sexual molestation on top of failure to bond with your same-sex parent is a, a powerful combination for creating great homosexual confusion and neurosis. Then finally comes the day when you decide, well, everybody's saying this is who you are, this is what you feel, you feel this um, attraction to the same sex. Uh, and so eventually you give in and you try a sexual experience. And in the embrace of another, you get almost everything you've been looking for and longing for all your life. It's much, much more than the sex that you're getting. You're getting an embrace by another male that you've longed for since, since as early as you can remember. The dad that never embraced you, you're finally getting embraced. And usually uh, young people are introduced to homosexuality by an older person. This is very, very common. It's because they're looking for father figures and they tend to latch on to older people as their hope, as their models, to model themselves after. And if that older person happens to be a homosexual, uh, that older person can spot that need in that younger person and often takes advantage of it. And um, the older person knows that they're being the father figure and um, the younger person is being the sexual figure. And it's a very common scenario. So that was basically how my neurosis developed over the years. I refused to ever take on the identity as homosexual. And I just consider that a grace of, of God in my life. I refused to take it on as an identity. And I, and I consider that to be a significant plus in my getting healed quicker than the norm. Um, when you adopt it as an identity, as who you are intrinsically, it's much more difficult to reorient your thinking and belief systems. Although it's quite possible, of course. So let's look at uh, a line I've drawn here. Heterosexual, bisexual, homosexual. Now, Kinsey had a, a line similar to this. And he, I think he ran it from 1 to 10, or was it? Or 1 to 7 or something. And uh, Kinsey's line, where you were along that line, was what you were. That was how he drew his line. This is what you were born as. My line is how you perceive yourself, not who you really are as you were created, but how you perceive yourself. And everyone on earth falls along that line somewhere in terms of how they perceive themselves. And. Um, I never would allow myself to perceive myself beyond the bisexual. I finally, after sleeping with a thousand men as a male prostitute, I finally gave in to calling myself at least a bisexual. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but you, ha you have to have had this problem before to really laugh at that. Um, so this is how people perceive themselves. So it's not as the homosexual community has tried to drill into culture over the decades now, you are either born one or you're not. Uh, people perceive themselves anywhere along these lines. And, there are, and the people I, I sought out as partners were mostly heterosexual men. Um, many of the men who picked me up were married men with kids in their middle age to later years who were experimenting with something they'd always thought about doing but never had done before. And now that society was allowing it, 
they were trying it before they lost their sexual abilities. Uh, in order to establish unnatural sexual desire, it takes a perfectly synergized combination of psycho-emotional influences and events, all of which are affected by a number of lesser factors. And so the, the creating of the homosexual neurosis, there are two basic ways it's created. And you'll find one or both of those ways in all homosexual neurosis. However, there is a host of contributing factors that help push you more toward um, the homosexual um, neurosis or away from it. For example, the timing of things in your life. Say you were molested. Well, were you molested as a four-year-old or were you molested as a 17-year-old? Um, your capacity to handle the molestation is vastly different depending on your age and the effect on a four-year-old would be infinitely greater than the effect on the 17-year-old. The event itself, was it a violent, brutal uh, rape or something, or was it uh, uh, more subtle forms of molestation that didn't go very far? Uh, the number of times it occurred. Somebody who is molested repeatedly over a number of years has a lot more to deal with than somebody where it was a one-time event only and that was it. The severity, the family dynamics. Um, were, were you in a family environment where you could tell what happened to you and where you were supported and, and brought to healing and not looked upon as damaged goods or something? Uh, the family dynamics can be very, very important in the outcome of a molestation in someone's life or in the creation of the homosexual neurosis to begin with in terms of uh, father figures and mother figures. Outside influences. Um, perhaps your father was cold and distant. Perhaps you didn't have a father at all. Uh, but maybe you had a very strong, healthy uncle or scout leader or teacher who became the father figure for your life and filled in the gap that your real father was not able to fulfill. They can be very, very powerful. This is why you can have different outcomes in the same family. You have four brothers in my family, only two of which end up with any degree of homosexual neurosis. Why not the other two? Well, outside influences, sensitivity levels, all these kinds of variables that can play a part in what has happened. Emotional and spiritual health. How emotional and spiritually healthy are you? People who fall into neuroses are people who generally are unhealthy emotionally for many other reasons. They've already got an unhealthy emotionality going often because of other factors. Spiritual health. Are you strong spiritually? Do you know God? Do you have an intimate relationship with the Father? So that when you have this need for a male figure, you can go to the Father in heaven and get it met there if nowhere else. And my healing process very much was going to the Father and getting reparented by God the Father and having Him bond with me and give me all the emotional things that I didn't get from my real Father. Personality. I've mentioned this before, your sensitivity levels, so forth and so on. State of neediness, dependency, or naivete in which you exist. If you're already very needy emotionally, uh, a homosexual predator will spot that and take advantage of you. If you're emotionally healthy and not in need of bonding outside the family environment, they are much less likely to prey upon you and you're much less likely to end up with a problem. So there we have actually three factors that create the typical development of sexual identity.